Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the Les Miles Show. Big 12 conference play is underway for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Unfortunately, on opening day in College Station, Texas, Texas A&M handed the Cowboys a 21-7 defeat. My pleasure to welcome alongside the head coach at Oklahoma State, Les Miles. Les, your general thoughts on the game in College Station. Well, we went there um, as a confident football team, a team that uh, knew that they could win uh, at Kyle Field and against a and uh, We had a great plan, um, really wanted to go there and take the momentum of the game and uh, just didn't implement it. So, Highlights from the Big 12 Conference opener between the Cowboys and the Aggies coming up after this. Welcome back to the Les Miles Show. Boy, it was a special day for the Big 12 Conference opener. We were on one of the most patriotic campuses in America, College Station, Texas, and Kyle Field, the Cowboys at Texas A&M. Boy, it was a special environment, wasn't it, Les? Uh, the uh, entire stadium was red, white, and blue, and uh, very patriotic. Uh, there was a lot of energy and enthusiasm, and uh, I'm sure our, our uh, team drew from that. As you could see, red in the upper deck, white in the middle deck and blue on the bottom. Kickoff starting this football game and the thing is really the first four series of this game were dominated by defense on both sides of the ball. Your defense came out and played very very well. No question. The defense has been playing well. We knew that the defense could get after this uh, A&M offense and really wanted to play to that strength. A&M trying to come out and run the football and that was a key in your game plan on defense not allowing this A&M team to effectively rush it, the best rushing team you'd faced. No question. The, uh, if, if you look at um, uh, the athleticism of our defense, uh, chasing it down, uh, that's a, a real strong aspect um, to our club. So immediately, three plays and out for Texas A&M, and your team gets pretty good field position for its first opportunity on offense from the 42. We would have enjoyed a fast start on offense here. Uh, really didn't get it. Um, uh, Denard going into the line there, and but uh, Tatum um, started rushing the ball well, and uh, we enjoyed it. We're, we really are not pressured at all, but we scramble out. Uh, uh, Oso gets, uh, now this punt uh, shows you that there's a wide open seam right dead in the middle of the, uh, of the formation. We looked at it on the first punt, and uh, uh, we knew and had that plan that, in fact, that's something that we would do later. In fact, we'll get to that in just a bit. Texas A&M again trying to run the football, but not having much luck. Dwayne Levels, Levels makes, man. makes a great play, and uh, he, uh, he pl he's playing stronger and stronger every game. So, And Bill Clay, your defensive coordinator, doing a good job of having the right guys in the right place, huh? No question. More than 30 years coaching experience for the Oklahoma State defensive coordinator and the Cowboy defense setting the tone early in this contest. A&M trying to go to the air and not having much luck there either. In fact, this turns out to be an intentional grounding call. The Cowboys get the ball right back. Boy, your defense played so well early in this game, huh? No question. The, uh, and, and they'll continue to do so, and we will uh, um, we'll get this club headed in the right direction. Another opportunity for the Cowboys on offense. But again, defense was a story here. Poe guy just lost his footing there. Absolutely. She really not pressured significantly. And this end of the boundary was a difficult uh, uh, pitch, but should give us an opportunity to get a first down. If we continue on the corner here, uh, there'll be an opportunity at a throw, and, and we had good protection. Here's the this fake This is the punt. fake punt. Now, the, the, the last play that you saw was a wide open center, and he could have run for uh, 30 yards for that matter. Obviously, we get nine, and uh, uh, Brooks makes a great play, and now we give them great field position, which we didn't want to do. We came in with the idea that we would take the momentum at that point with the fake punt. And uh, we practiced it all week, felt really comfortable with it, and then now they go for it on a fourth and one and get a nice breakout and really leads to their continued drive. We didn't think that they could kick a field goal from there, and that also played into the thoughts of whether or not we fake. Dwayne Goins with the nice reception and run there. Lots of yardage after the catch. That's the strength of the A&M receivers, and they take the lead, cashing in the opportunity. Now, that gave the defense a short field, and we understand that. It's not something we're going to do often. Fact Rashawn Woods on a nice reception on the perimeter, and then hits Rashawn in the hands. And I, and I promise you, if, if there's a, a stronger competitor on our team, uh, it's uh, Rashawn Woods. He'll not drop many balls. Cowboys on offense, late in the first quarter, Poe guy hit, actually injured on that play, Coach. Well, there he got a clean shot uh, off the left tackle, and, and that's a problem for us. Now, it, we thought he was injured pretty significantly, and uh, 
apparently stung and came back in later. That means the true freshman Josh Fields would come into the game, and I'll tell you what, he looked pretty good, Coach, at least in my opinion. Um, he makes a couple of really good throws, stands in the pocket as a young man with some poise, and uh, Josh has got a great future in front of him. I don't think there's any question. In fact, he led the Cowboys on a nice scoring opportunity drive. Tatum Bell, pretty play there. Yeah, the uh, uh, nice little pitch back to Tatum, and uh, he's got great speed and gives us an opportunity to get something. He scrambles here and, and really tries to make a really nice play. Tark was standing on the line. That's what they called. He could not re-enter the field, but Tark made a great play uh, in, in, as a try for the catch there. Bell breaking loose on this play. Looks like the Cowboys are going to have a first and goal. There was a holding penalty on the catch by Denard that was nullified, and then a holding call on this play as well. No Tough question. Break. Yeah, we were more penalized in this game, and it, and it really ended up hurting us uh, as you look at it. This is a, a mishandled pitch and, uh, and maybe a little too stiff. In fact, the Cowboys had 11 penalties during this football game. The, the turnover, but your defense makes a big play. How about the interception by Terrence Robinson? No question. And, and the... Uh, our defense has been opportunistic and, is, and will continue to play strong. Here's another look. Not a bad throw by Ferris, but Robinson right there to get the pick and give your team a first and goal from the 10. The Cowboys are able to take advantage of the scoring opportunity with maybe one of the more well-executed plays of the season as Robinson lumbers down to the 10 and, my goodness, a couple of guys make big blocks as we get a look at the first and goal play. It took Oklahoma State just one play to get to the end zone. Well, this is the formation that we were in when we went for fourth and one and felt like we were going to have some advantages. We knew the defense they were in, and uh, Tatum Bell gets a nice run. Uh, uh, there's a good block by Willie Young and uh, Michael Denard. Willie Young smashing the strong safety, and Michael Denard gets a cut in the corner, and it's a very clean uh, run for uh, Tatum. Nice job. The momentum goes back on Oklahoma State's side as the Cowboys even the game at seven. That play occurred midway through the second quarter and the Cowboys taking advantage of the turnover are able to tie the game and the point after attempt from Luke Phillips skies through the uprights and the Cowboy faithful in College Station feel good. Halftime tied at seven. Despite some adversity you're in good shape. And fortunate to be tied at seven mm -hmm. considering the fake that went awry. Um, we would have hoped at that point that we'd have been uh, ahead and uh, in charge. Special halftime festivities. Now here's something a bit unusual. You kicked off to begin the game and then you kicked off to start the second half. Uh, we had a, um, a, a, an anxious youngster in the, uh, at, the, at the captain that made the, uh, a, a wrong decision. Uh, A&M won the toss. They elected to defer. Our response should have been, we take the ball, and uh, what, what, had we won the toss, we would have deferred as well. Uh, he said, the, the, uh, the captain said, kick, we'll kick. Great block here, now we're in really good field position, feel the momentum uh, with the opportunity to, to change right after this play. The, uh, um, in fact, Chris Massey is the one who Chris got a Massey, hand on it. Chris Massey's played a lot in this game and, yep. and made a very significant play there. The Cowboys are on the move. Mike Denard, what a fine player at fullback he is. You see him running the ball and then making a nice reception here as well. Yeah, Michael is going to be a solid performer for us all year. We're, we're short yardage there. We um, go quarterback sneak and get it. We run a counter. And come back in there and get good yardage. Tatum Bell's running hard at this point. Uh, same thing uh, off the right tackle. Third and one situation here. Nothing doing for Denard. If we'd have got a, a, a good right side there, we'd have been uh, uh, first and ten. The fourth and one, we put Massey in the game because we wanted to bring an athlete, an, an element to this uh, play that, uh, that we need. And he'd, if he'd have ducked in underneath the offensive tackle, uh, we had a first down. And boy, you felt the momentum change in College Station. Big pass interference call here goes the Aggies' way and gives them 15 yards. I didn't think that ball was catchable. I thought it was well out of bounds, and but uh, we really got uh, no explanation on the sideline. Reverse play here. Goins breaking loose, picking up first down yardage. Boy, it was amazing how quickly everything shifted in this football game, really an, an even football game at A&M. Quality team took advantage of the opportunity and took it down the field. Really the only scoring drive they had during the afternoon. No question. Our defense playing really well, and uh, we have to make sure that we get it going on offense to take some heat off of them. Jamar Taylor, the Notre Dame transfer at wide receiver for Texas A&M, 
takes the ball into the end zone and AM takes a lead. And then field position became such an issue for your football team throughout the second half trying to come from behind. Yeah, we had some, uh, we put the offensive line in a difficult position here too because we were throwing the ball and uh, they had their ears pinned back and were rushing. And then this is the block punt that uh, cost us seven points. Uh, we had a, um, a starter out of the lineup and the backup in and a uh, very difficult position for him to be in. He's practiced, but uh, obviously did not execute on that uh, at that punt. Boy, and fans don't realize how significant personnel can be in situations like that, huh? No question. And, and here's uh, Rashawn Woods. Rashawn Woods, is you, you have to enjoy his compete. He will always be a plus for us. Cowboys trying to make an effort, trailing 21-7. Good running play here by Tatum Bell. It was really enjoyable to see Tatum uh, mature because there was a, it was a physical game and he played awfully well. Again, Rashawn off the left side uh, and in the end of the game and uh, uh, R.C. Slocum is a quality coach and uh, runs a great program and uh, we just would have enjoyed the victory there. You know, no question about that and thinking back about the contest and not to carry this too far but my goodness, there in the third quarter, things shifted in a hurry. You had the fourth and one. If you convert that, you have all the momentum and a chance to go in for uh, a go-ahead score and still control the game. Instead, A&M gets the ball back, and the next thing you know, there are two touchdowns ahead. No question. The, uh, um, had we gotten the fourth and one, felt like we had an advantage with Massey at quarterback as an athlete. Maybe he could have ducked up inside. He got stretched too far. and we, I mean, we knew the defense that was going to be played, and it just – Felt like we had a great call. The Cowboys had to have some special travel arrangements for the trip to College Station with the various events that have occurred in our country the past two weeks. Tom Dorado gives us a look at the Cowboys' special trip to College Station and the precautions taken on our two-minute drill next. Welcome back. Our lives changed dramatically the morning of September 11th. Things somehow will never be the same. The Cowboys made their first trip since the tragic events on the East Coast and experienced some of these changes firsthand. Tom Dorado explains on this week's Southwestern Bell Two Minute Drill. Marty, this is our first trip uh, since the tragedy in New York and at the Pentagon, uh, obviously a little different mode of transportation this time around. Yes, Tom, we were taking a few extra precautions. Uh, we just want to make sure people feel comfortable with what we're doing, that, that we've done everything we can to make sure that we have a, a safe airplane to travel to College Station back on. I see behind us here just a little different situation as uh, bags are being sent to a central point, so to speak, and not just being picked up and taken to the plane as usual. Right, Tom. What we've done is that uh, a couple of days ago we came out and visited with the uh, Stillwater Airport people along with the OSU police and came up with some ideas to how we could make people feel more comfortable with our travel, uh, with the luggage. What we're doing is that we're having it tagged and checked to make sure that all the luggage has names on it, that we know who it is, and it'll be tagged. And much like at a regular airport, it will be just put aside and then the airport will take it uh, and put it on the airplane then. A little nervous, uh, a little different routine than usual, having to get our baggage checked and uh, wait over here a little longer, but uh, I think we'll be all right, We're ready for it. Well, Gary, this uh, first charter out for Oklahoma State uh, probably puts this whole thing in perspective for you as far as new airport security restrictions. Yes, it does, Tom. We, uh, we are taking this serious, uh, just like all the airports are, and we're, we're using every uh, manner that we can to uh, make sure that this flight is safe for the OSU folks. You know, we talked with Marty about the check-in policy and the bags being inspected. Kind of give us a synopsis of what, how it affects you as far as running this airport. What are some of the changes that we would see here today? Okay, uh, probably the first thing you're going to notice is there, are, there will be a presence of uniformed officers to help us control uh, where the people are and uh, we will have a physical perimeter around the aircraft itself that will be the secure area. Only people that have a security badge or uniformed officers uh, will be allowed in that, obviously the crew, uh, until we load. And, and then the loading procedure will uh, actually be a screening process that lets only people in that area with a boarding pass. We, uh, 
uh, we're taking it serious and we want to make uh, every precaution that we can to uh, make it safe. I think people get caught up with the fact that the big airports have so many restrictions and so many of the things that are put into place as we speak, but uh, airports this size as well have a new set of rules to play by. That's right, that's right. Uh, and some of these are really self-imposed, uh, but uh, we take it as serious as, uh, as uh, they do at the larger airports. Well, Chief, obviously there's a uh, law enforcement presence out here today. That's correct. We, we felt like we needed an increased law enforcement presence uh, just to make sure everything goes okay and, and, and in order to keep a secure, a secure perimeter around the airport and around the airplane. And I would assume plans are already in action and already in uh, moving ahead for the first home game that the Cowboys will have uh, since the tragedy. Exactly. We started our preparations for the game that got canceled and so we have a lot of plans already laid. We're fine-tuning those for this coming game for our home game as well. And we've done some things with Champion Air to make sure we verified some things with them. Uh, so we feel very comfortable that um, you know we've done pretty much everything we can to make sure that we have a safe trip to College Station and back. We felt very um, good about uh, leaving from Stillwater Airport. Felt like the the uh, area was very secure and uh, we're more than willing to uh, uh, go through this extra safety precautions. Felt the same when we landed in uh, uh, Texas at uh, College Station and uh, we feel like that uh, if things go uh, as they have in the past in this one game that security will not be an issue. We'll have some final thoughts with the coach from the Les Miles Show continues after this. Welcome back. Well, Coach, one and two through three games. Where do you go from here? Um, the team's not that uh, far away from being a good football team and getting these games, these close games, in the win column. Uh, if you look at uh, our defense is playing extremely well, that's got to continue. Our special teams, uh, there are advantages to our special teams, and we have to return to those advantages and, and, and let them play for us. On offense, we're getting great play out of our running backs, uh, our wide receivers. We need to sure up some things on offense and stay the course. Above all else, stay the course. Let us give you a couple of reminders. First of all, next week, Northwestern State of Louisiana will be at Stillwater for the makeup game. That replaces a Northern Arizona contest. You can use your Northern Arizona tickets for that game. It will begin next Saturday at 7 o'clock. That's Northwestern State against the Cowboys at 7 o'clock next Saturday. Northwestern State, one of the better teams in 1AA. They knocked off TCU last week and Northwestern State off to a 3-0 start. It could be a pretty good football game. Thanks for watching us today. We look forward to seeing you next week on The Les Miles Show.